Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And uh, today we've been doing our annual tank inspections, uh, which is why I'm dressed like this. Every year we go into, uh, or we go around to the sounding tubes. There's well over 300 of them and sound them and see, hey, do we have any fluid in these tanks that we shouldn't? Like obviously some tanks have fluid in them that's part of our ballast system that keep us level. Um, most shouldn't, but you know, a pipe breaks inside of space like this, or um, you get rainwater coming into the ship, deck drain leaks or something, and all of a sudden the water goes to the low spot, and now it's in one of these tanks that you never get to. So every now and again we find something. Um, more often than not, what we find is, you know, the sheet says that the sounding tube should be here, but we can't find that. Or the um, sounding tube is clogged, broken, will not open, something like that, so we can't actually sound that tank. So a couple days uh, every winter, we go around and we actually climb down into those tanks that come up, but we can't find where they are, or, or the sounding says there's water in them, and we go and we visually inspect and make sure that that's not the case, or oh, there, there is something wrong with this, let's take care of it which is why I'm dressed like that. But being inside of these tanks today made me think about what is good torpedo defense. Um, and that is really where battleships are most vulnerable, below the waterline. From day one until the end of their careers, that is the part of the ship that is most vulnerable. So obviously that is something that just about every nation did studies into, and just about everyone came to the same conclusions, but nobody actually built a ship with perfect uh, torpedo protection. So why is that? So uh, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. We're, we're gonna talk about what everybody came to the conclusion of as being the most effective systems and why they then went and did something completely different. Also, right up front, it's worth pointing out that this is true for World War II era torpedoes, World War I era torpedoes, like the, that first half of the 20th century when battleships are really hot business, uh, as opposed to modern day torpedoes. A World War II torpedo slams into the side of the ship and explodes and rips a hole in the side of the ship and floods that way. So this type of torpedo defense is specifically designed for that. Modern ships do not, would not have much use for this. Um, it still protects against mines, but in general, a modern torpedo is designed to go under your ship and detonate there. And then the explosion displaces a bunch of uh, water and that is going to push up on the bottom of your ship and bend your keel that way. And then when that explosion dissipates, well, holy cow, now there's a cavity in the ocean where that explosion has pushed all the water away. So now your keel drops back down to that point and it's supposed to break the back of your ship. As far as I know, um, there isn't really a good defense against that. Sink the submarine before it shoots at you. Um, the, Iowa-class battleships don't really have anything like this. We've, we've got layered protection in case there is a physical explosion against the side of the ship, but uh, we don't really have any defense against the keel being broken. And so far as I know, it would be classified if it existed, but so far as I know, there isn't uh, any sort of special keel design that protects against this type of torpedo. So, there were Four principles, and as early as 1906, when HMS Dreadnought herself comes out, different countries like Germany, Japan, the United States, Great Britain are all starting to do tests. In fact, uh, Germany does some of the earliest tests um, with their pre-Dreadnought type battleships and, and whatnot to see, well, what uh, will make an effective torpedo defense. And the four rules that they come up with is you want your torpedo bulkhead as far from the explosion as possible. So the explosion is going to be against the shell plating, the outside of the ship. So the deeper your torpedo defense can be, the better. 
that gives you a lot of room for that explosion to dissipate. And so if it's got room to dissipate, then it's not pushing all of its force against this bulkhead right here, the holding bulkhead, the innermost bulkhead, where if that gets defeated, now you've got water in the part of the boat where the people are, uh, which is decidedly a bad thing. That's what we're trying to stop here. So that's rule one. The, the deeper you can make that, the better. And so all other things being equal, no matter how complex your torpedo defense system is, if it is a shallow system, it's not going to be as good as the guy who goes out there with a really deep system. Number two, if you have a multi-bulkhead system, and just about everybody went with a multi-bulkhead system, you want the heaviest bulkhead inboard. You don't want the heaviest bulkhead outboard. One, if the heavy bulkhead is, is outboard, that full explosion is being directed against that heavy bulkhead, which means it's more likely once it's punched through that to then be able to act upon the lighter inner bulkhead and damage that. Two, uh, your heavy outer bulkhead is not going to be the same thickness all the way through. Battleships have armored belts. Those armored belts tend to terminate right around the waterline where torpedoes hit. And an armored belt is capable of resisting most torpedo explosions. However, the significantly thinner steel below that will just rip away on that seam where it's mounted to the armored belt. So you'll often see pictures where hey, belt's perfectly fine or maybe it's indented a little, but then below that it's all crumpled and holed and well, I can see where the water got into that ship. There's your problem. So your heavy bulkhead should be inside if possible and as far away from the point of impact as you can make it. Uh, the next rule of thumb is true of all armor, not just torpedo defense. One thick plate is better than multiple thin plates. So if your torpedo defense is just one plate, or really shell plating and then a gap and then one holding bulkhead and that holding bulkhead is thick, you're going to have a better torpedo defense than the guy who has even 10 uh, thin plates protecting them. And our final rule of thumb is for your inner bulkhead, your, your main holding bulkhead, the load carrying capability should be in the plating itself, the flat plating and not in the framing. You do not want rigid framing because let's say an explosion comes into this space. This frame is probably going to hold tight, but it's going to shunt that explosion on either side of this frame. So you see we've, we've got a frame bay here, it's four feet wide because that's the frame spacing on a battleship. So you're going to see this uh, wall here bend in, in that four foot gap and because it is in such a small area, you've got more force on a smaller area, it's more likely to tear and be defeated. Whereas if we're talking about this whole wall and the explosion comes through here and it's able to bend the whole wall away, well, then it will have enough tensile strength uh, spreading the force out along a great enough area that the whole thing will bend instead of breaking. Uh, so that's part of why IO-class battleships have this framing here, it's help holding up this bulkhead, but if this deforms, if the holding bulkhead deforms, it's going to rip away from this frame, as opposed to if this frame was on the other side of the wall like you would expect it to be. This should be on the inside of the ship, not the outside of the ship where we are. Um, that would hold this wall and, and shunt things into certain pockets, as opposed to, yeah, the, the wall will rip away from this as all one big piece. So. Those are your four rules. During the interwar period, now everybody's got a bunch of extra ships to test on because the Washington Naval Treaty says you have to dispose of them. So some countries like uh, the United States and Japan have almost brand new battleship hulls that they're not allowed to complete. Washington, Tosa. Um, some countries like the United States and Great Britain have German battleships that they've captured that they can do tests on. Uh, some countries have older pre-dreadnought and dreadnought type battleships that they're able to do tests on. So they start to figure out how well their systems work and come up with formulas and whatnot. And uh, the Japanese come up with 
your biggest threat from a torpedo explosion is the explosion is going to turn the outer wall into shrapnel, right? An explosion against metal makes a bunch of uh, small metal pieces. Those metal pieces are what are going to punch through your inner wall and allow flooding inside the ship. So you need something to stop those. So the Japanese found out that uh, exactly 600 millimeters, about 24 inches, is the perfect amount to have a void space, so about two feet, um, and you fill that with liquid, fuel, water, whatever. And that is just enough that any splinter that explosion happens out here punches into this space, the two feet of liquid will stop that splinter before it hits the inner bulkhead and punches into the rest of the ship. If you make it deeper than that, you're not getting any extra benefit. If you're making it narrower than that, it's not enough liquid to stop the projectiles created by this explosion, so it might go through both bulkheads. So your perfect torpedo defense is going to be a system as deep as humanly possible, uh, and that depth is going to depend on the size of the warhead you're expecting to face. Obviously, if somebody develops a bigger warhead, you're going to need more depth, uh, as opposed to a, a smaller warhead where you don't need to be that deep. And then have a single layer of fuel that's about 24 inches thick, and that's all you need. Like I said, nobody actually does this. People come up with really uh, complex things like Pugli's cylinders or crushing tubes like HMS Hood had or other sorts of things to try and absorb this explosion. And why didn't they just adopt that? Well, these ships need to carry enough fuel to get the range that they're supposed to have. So for example, New Jersey needs a range of 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots, which is 2.4 million gallons of fuel. There is not enough room if you just have a 24 inch uh, tank to carry all of that fuel. So they have to add more fuel tanks. The other issue, you've got other things like the size of your slipway, the size of your dry docks, the size of your canals, the Panama Canal, the Kiel Canal, uh, the Suez Canal, things like this that limit where you can deploy your ships. Uh, and this is limiting how wide you can make your ships. So if your ship can only be 108 feet wide like an Iowa-class battleship, and you need a certain amount of space in the middle for the engines and for the people and everything else, well, that only leaves a certain amount of space on each side. So you cannot make it as deep as the math tells you you should. And so the solution to that is to make as many uh, layers as possible. Theoretically, the Iowa-class battleships hold their uh, fuel in the wrong spaces. They should be holding them more interior. That's what they were designed to do. Uh, but they found that the torpedo defense system didn't work. It wasn't deep enough. So they moved the fuel to the outer tanks, which were wider. So those are the voids. They're supposed to absorb more stuff. Um, but then there's more liquid to absorb the explosion. So it's a little bit of a help. And part of that is because by the time we get into World War II, we're no longer doing these tests that we did in the teens and 20s and 30s. Uh, we, we're just, we gotta turn these ships out to go and fight in the war. Uh, so it wasn't until the South Dakotas were built, the Iowas were under construction already designed, that they actually get around to caisson tests of the uh, torpedo defense and figure out, well, this isn't as good as it should be. So people try to come up with better solutions and uh, Probably, I've always said that the American solution of, of multi-layered system of tanks um, with liquid-loaded tanks in the middle and voids on each side is the best. Other people can uh, dispute that, but none of it is the actual best that you could do. It's the best that you can do within the design constraints of these ships. And um, maybe, we would have found a way to do it better, but torpedoes changed, and so torpedo defense is completely different nowadays. So uh, who do you think had the best torpedo defense, or who do you think came closest to the ideal torpedo defense? Um, 
you guys know I'm no fan of Bismarck, but Bismarck's main uh, torpedo defense thing was just, here's a big wide open space on the side of the ship. Uh, and she was less restricted in beam than other ships. She, she uh, is wider than an Iowa class battleship despite being shorter. So uh, that's my guess. What, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for ways you can support the channel. Uh, you can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the museum. Thanks for watching.